All right, whatever. Screw this Bluetooth thing. Hello, so my name is Brian Hogg. Uh, for those who don't know me, um, I've got this couple popular WordPress plugins that are free and pro. Uh, I work for vehicles. Speaking of jobs, we are hiring. <laughs> so you go to slash jobs. Um, and I also run the complimentary meetup, uh, Ham Ham Hamont JS, uh, which is just basically all the presentations have something to do typically uh, with JavaScript. So, um, and those happen at the um, Comotion uh, on King, which is a neat little venue where our office happens to be. So, and this, uh, it's funny when he's like, oh, is, can anyone do a quick presentation? I'm like, I didn't realize it'd be the only one. I thought it'd be a quick five minute lightning talk. But basically I'm not gonna go through, uh, well, first, we have the room. So how many people have done view at all? Like anything? No, yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Uh, cool, okay, so I'm not gonna ask, have you tested view components? <laughs> That'll probably be an even smaller component. Well, how many, <laughs> well, how many people have done React? Sweet. Uh, another JavaScript framework, like not just pure JS or jQuery or whatever. Yeah, quite a few. So, um, yeah. So that's good. So yeah. It's, so I won't go through like configuring all this stuff. Like basically, if you use Vue CLI, you can spin up a new project very quickly. It gives you a little like graphic or uh, you know command line based menu thing where you hit space and you're like, I want Jess and whatever. Um, so you can literally pick like I want to test with Jess and and a couple other options. And then boom, you've got a project that uh, you can run a yarn test or NPM test, and it'll run these tests that we're gonna go through. So um, I won't go through that. Um, it's, it's pretty easy to find on the interwebs, <clears throat> but uh, this will literally just be a coding demo. <clears throat> so, um, so Vue has a <clears throat> few different ways that you can configure it. So you don't have to have it as like um, or the, the nicest way to do it is to have these .view files, and each .view file can have a template, so that's just HTML, uh, a script section uh, for all the logic, and then a style, optionally a style section, uh, which you can have scoped to these styles will just work with this component and nothing else. Um, yeah. Hmm? yeah, I can try. Uh, preferences. <clears throat> Font. I'm usually the one always saying, can you up the font? <laughs> that good? Sweet. Um, cool. So yeah, so you can have that style, script, and template section. And uh, you can't have it set up where everything's in one file and you're like creating these components in one big JS file, but this is a nice way to do it. And then use the something in the background to like take this dot view file and make it into JavaScript so that it can be uh, interpreted by your web browser. So with these, uh, so what I'm going to go through is a counter app. So basically, at the end of the day, we want it so that when you click on a button, it's going to increment a counter. Go one, two, three, four, um, and then also uh, look at like adding. Uh, I'm not actually going to do an API or have it working, but actually like, oh, you click count, I wanna like update some external service to be like, hey, the count is now four or whatever. Um, and then yeah, go through some gotchas that can come up when you're uh, trying to, to test this stuff and things to try and avoid. So, um, so when you're gonna be testing a, a view file, normally you'd wanna have, or you'd set it up so that you have this like dot spec file. And that would actually define for this component, here are the tests I wanna run. And the syntax is pretty straightforward. So you, at the top, you would have like, you'd be importing whatever you need. So these, these view test utils and this mount function, which I'll go through in a bit. Uh, you'd import, obviously, the, the component that you wanna test. And then, uh, in this case, I just kinda left it there, the, the API that we're gonna be using. So anything else that you need to run your test. Um, and I'll go through this mock thing as well. But essentially the syntax is it's pretty Englishy, I guess. Um, this is weird because it feels like the presentation I did, I don't even know how many years ago. I think AJ was sitting there when there was a booth uh, about Jasmine and yeah, JavaScript. Yeah, that. right, which is like, which got <laughs> TDD of like JavaScript going. So this feels weird doing this presentation again on, you know, quote unquote, more modern frameworks. Um, but it's very, very similar syntax to a lot of the JavaScript testing frameworks where you're saying, I'm, I'm describing, you know, what? And this can just be any string to, to that you can see when you're running your tests. And then you have like, it will do this. And then a function in it that 
you know, you make some assertions. So, um, you know, we're going to be like kind of starting as basic as possible. It's going to be like, there will be the, the number zero on the page when this thing runs. And we don't care how that happens. Uh, it just has zero. And then we also want to say like, okay, when I actually add one, it should show one. It shows zero, but now it'll show one afterwards. And then also like when you click on a button, I wanted to, after the button's clicked, to have one on it. Um, we could actually have this here just to be like, oh, it was zero before and now it's one. And then also, uh, yeah, calls an API. So we can have a thing saying this thing has been called. Um, so yeah, so I've got it set up right now as like XIT, uh, which like means like ignore or skip this test. So we'll just kind of go through them one by one and make them work. <laughs> Uh, so if I uh, run this, and I'll bump this up a bit, this should fail. Good. Because it's saying like this empty div has no zero. Makes sense. What's the easiest way to make this pass? <laughs> it won't actually do anything, uh, but I can literally put zero in there, right? So this is like standard, not standard, but like a way to do TDD where you're like, okay, what is the quickest way to get this uh, to pass? So if I hit the zero in there, uh, that should pass, good. Uh, and it says like pending test. <laughs> so it's kind of alerting you to the fact that you've got one test uh, that's running and you've got three tests that you're ignoring currently. So you should probably fix that before you actually deploy this. Um, and away you go. So the next one uh, would literally be, uh, or would be the renders count, right? So um, let's go through the syntax of this one first actually, and then I'll go through this. So. The way that we actually uh, test a view component is we need to like mount it and, and have it available to call uh, functions on like, uh, you know, give me the HTML output of that view component, right? And to be able to say, okay, expect this HTML output to contain something. Um, there's a couple different things you can do. So shallow mount uh, is the one you should use the most because it won't it won't uh, render any of any other view components that are in the view component right so if you have like counter and then you have some other like you know my other component right right which maybe does something or calls an api or who knows it'll literally replace this with like the string false or something like it just it won't render that component so you don't get all these like side effect things that you might not actually be wanting to test uh, but the alternative is to have it be uh, to use mount, which will actually mount like the full thing, which you may want to do with some like integration tests that have other stuff in it. So, and then literally once you've got this now wrapper uh, for your component that's in memory, you can then run stuff like .html, get the HTML output, and then you can do whatever. And to contain is definitely a, a standard one to say like this has this in it. So this one is a little, a little more complicated. We're going through, we're, we're doing the same thing. We're mounting that uh, counter, uh, but and at first we're saying it's zero. So it has zero in it, but now I'm calling this function. Uh, so dot VM will be your like uh, object to run stuff in the script part of your component, which we haven't written yet. So we'll, we'll do that now. Um, that has an increment function and then afterwards it should show one. So it should actually do something and output uh, or update the output to it. So we'll start with our zero. Um, so with, with view, it's pretty straightforward. There's a lot of um, functions and, and one other you can add to the script section, but one you'll pretty much use every time is data, which is your just local data to this view component. So I need something to store the count in, so I can put like count zero. So at first it's a uh, zero count, great. And then also we can have this uh, method section, which will have you know one or more functions in it that we can then call uh, in our uh, app or our component. So we can have here like increment, and here we can say okay this count uh, plus equals one. So I'm just adding one to the local count. So the first time it's called, it'll go from zero to one, and then one to two, and everything else. This isn't actually doing anything yet, so if I run, uh, actually I have to change this. So if I move move this so it's not XIT, but IT, so it'll actually run. It's still gonna complain. So it's still gonna say, so it, it ran uh, the function, 
that existed now. And actually, I could have done it where, like, if I comment this out, let's make it all true TDD, we can say, because we want a function to exist. So the first thing I'd be, it would come up is if we don't have that function, is like increment doesn't exist. So cool. So we can actually, like, make that be a function. But then, yeah, it doesn't actually output this uh, count, right? So it's, it still has zero, but it expects it to have one. So I can go up and I can like change that to one. Well, no, sorry. <laughs> if I just change it to one to try and make it pass, it's like, let's see what happens. No, it's now, now it's one and zero because the first test failed, right? So what we can do is uh, it's, pretty, well, it's pretty common in a lot of um, frameworks to have these double curly braces and you can literally just have count uh, to output this data there. Uh, and up here, it's just count. Anything in here, it'd be this dot count. So if you're calling from the script, it's this and above it's not. And obviously, if there are any questions, please ask them as we go, because I will forget what I did five minutes ago. So there you go. So that, that passes, which is great. So we've now got a test that is asserting that we're outputting the number. We're also a test that's saying when we call this function that we now have, it goes from zero to one. Great. And now we want to actually add the like user functionality where they can actually be the one to increment it and not us actually calling uh, this function manually. So this test is going to, again, mount the counter. It's going to check the, to make sure it's zero at first. It's then going to use this wrapper find. And for anyone who knows like jQuery, uh, it's kind of similar syntax where you're saying, okay, in the wrapper, find a button. And the nice thing about these things being all these like encapsulated view components is like, um, you might need to do something like, uh, like if you, if you know, CSS would be like button dot, uh, increment or something, right? So a button with the class of increment. So you're saying the specific button, maybe if you have like a, uh, add one button and a reset button, right? You need to be a little more specific. Um, but otherwise if you just got one button and you try we want to try and make those, uh, uh, things as, as less dependent on classes and order and position as possible. So anyone who wants to go in and kind of make this look pretty, which I'm definitely not, you can go make it pretty and not break your tests, which is nice. Um, so I'm saying, okay, find the button and uh, trigger a click. So make a click. And then uh, after that point, it should be one. So if I run this, I would hope it would fail. It does. So find did not return button. Can't call trigger on a thing that doesn't exist. So cool. So minimum thing I can do is add a button so that there's a button to find and click. So I'll run that and great. So it found the button, it clicked it, but alas, it didn't do anything because I haven't actually done it. Anymore. So uh, view syntax, there's a couple different ways you can do it, but the common and short form way to do it is just at click um, and we can say uh, increment so now when this button is clicked, it's going to call the increment function, which should then increase the count by one, update the count, and we should be good, in theory. There you go. So that test passed now. So now we've got functionality that's saying the template has the output we want. Uh, it has a function to increment stuff. It has a button that does the incrementing, and it exists. Um, and if they, you know, if someone comes along and they like, I don't know what the hell this is. I'm just, I just want to do class equals pretty and whatever that's going to break the test. So you can add this to your uh, Bitbucket, GitHub, whatever thing to run these tests automatically. So if someone does do that and be all cowboy, they can, uh, they can get caught <laughs> and not have everything break in your app. <clears throat> so that's that. So the last thing I want to touch on before going through some kind of like gotchas is um, just an API. So it'd be very common that uh, when something happens in your component or somewhere in your app, you're gonna be wanting to call an API function externally. And when you're running these tests, like over and over again, you don't wanna actually be making network calls, right? Cause that would, uh, it just, A, it slow things down. They might not actually work because maybe you don't have internet or uh, whatever that that API might need something else to actually work as opposed to these kind of little unit tests um, but this test is essentially gonna mount this counter it's gonna call increment and then it's gonna say okay I expect this API function uh, to be called so if I go into obviously yeah if I get rid of this run it there we go 
go. It should fail, I hope. So it's gonna say like, well, first thing, it's gonna say just function value must be a mock or a spy. So it actually, it, it for, for me to be able to see if it's been called, I need to actually like mock it and, and make it not the real thing, but actually make it uh, kind of a fake version of it so I can just track to see if it's been called or not. Um, so if I do this like just.mock uh, function, it'll actually overwrite my little API uh, method. Yeah, so now it's, it's working in the sense that it is a thing it can check to see if it's been called, but it hasn't actually been and um, I won't go through too much detail. Like um, you could even just, uh, if you've used Axios, there's a couple other libraries, I think for JavaScript to make calls to other services. Um, but uh, a common thing is just to wrap it in a little API client uh, that will do these calls. So a get or post or patch or whatever, um, and actually make that request. And then uh, in our little counter thing, very straightforward, like we just have a little API client that gets done and then an update function with the new count that just calls this like counter method somewhere uh, with the new count, right? So um, if I add that uh, in now, so if I do like a console log here called, just to see like, is this method being called? Uh, oh no, sorry, I mocked it. <clears throat> so just to show. Or actually, sorry, I'll do that. So I'll leave that there so we can see if it's being called and oh crap, a real network call is being uh, made. But if we, um, so add our counter here and then in our increment, we actually call that update method. Um, so I'll make this uh, async. So there's async await if you haven't done in JavaScript just to like make it so that no other things execute. It kind of waits that that network call has finished before moving on. Um, so I could do like, uh, what is it, await, new uh, counter API, dot update with our new count. So I would call the external thing and, and uh, update the count uh, when it's run. So we can see, oh crap, <laughs> it's making a request. So it's actually calling the network, so we don't want that uh, to happen. So we can override, we can just put this in, just mock to override uh, that function and do that, and now we have it passing because we've added the call to our API in our uh, component and uh, we've asserted that, yep, it's being called. So again, if someone comes in and goes like, you know, and, and comments that out or whatever, you know, this, this could be a very critical part of your application to actually make an API call. Problem being with testing this kind of stuff, you, you, you know, you're mocking it, so if the API changes, right, like maybe the location of where it is uh, in here, right, it's not v1 counter, maybe it, it needs to be v2 counter. That won't break the test, right? Like, because it's, it's not actually making a network call. Um, uh, if, if you're doing something a little more complicated than this and you're like expecting something to be returned back, and again, that changes on the API, your test won't break. So it's not foolproof, but at least shows that you're trying to make that call and uh, with, with the parameters and it'll do uh, what it needs to do, assuming the API hasn't changed. Um, any questions on that? I went through a lot pretty quick. But I'll go through just a couple little gotchas um, that can come up when you're doing this kind of thing. A, like I think I kind of said a little bit, is uh, again, you, you want to try not to care so much that like, uh, you know, oh, this is in a span and you know, I, I put this in a, a, a span or something with some like uh, CSS and I then change my spec to assert that it's like in, you know, a span button, whatever. Right? I'm, I'm asserting that it's like exact structure that doesn't really matter for functionality wise. Um, you just want to have it be like as, as not dependent or whatever as on the styling as possible. So that someone can come in, they don't know JavaScript, but they know HTML, they know CSS, they can go in, they can add what they need to make it look nice, add some styling down here, it shouldn't break your test, right? Um, that's a biggie. Uh, Vue has this um, thing called next tick. So if you're doing something like, um, so Vue has a cycle, right? Where like something gets updated in the data, then it updates the template and whatever. Sometimes you might need to like wait a little bit for like 
for you to catch up or do another cycle. And so you think, okay, well, I'm doing this, you know, expect assertion, uh, but it's, it's failing, but it should, but you know, in, in a second it would be true or whatever, right? So you could actually do like a, uh, was it uh, this or a, yeah, a wrapper dot VM dot install assign next tick, right? So you could wrap uh, and put, and this is now saying, okay, wait for the next view cycle. And after that uh, happens, now make a nice little assertion that, you know, one equals two or something that like isn't true, like a failing test, whatever. Um, if I run this, I haven't actually done this part, so this is fun. Look, test pass, we're green, yay. But no, <laughs> if, you, if you look at the output, it says error, like one doesn't equal two. But because it's wrapped in this next tick, uh, the view, the just testing isn't gonna pick up on that to say this, this overall test here uh, failed, right? So dangerous situation where you can have, you think everything's good, everything's green, but really uh, you've got a failing uh, assertion in here. So there is another thing, I um, uh, can't remember the URL, of it, you can literally do, I think it's like a wait flush promises, which would do a very similar thing where it kind of waits for everything to finish. And then without this next tick, you can do this uh, expect here. And then you have to put like async up here. And again, that would just like, yeah, this is a library that you can import. Um, but then that way, now everything's outside of a next tick should wait for that to finish, and then you can actually have it show up down here and say that it's failed. So that's a, that's a biggie. Um, like I said, yeah, I've said this before, where like shallow mount versus mount can be a bit of a gotcha. So you do mount, and then in our counter, we have some other component that's doing other stuff, and that's actually being rendered. So I definitely recommend like using shallow mount whenever you can, just to uh, keep your test a little more unit, and not have other stuff uh, happening that you might not realize that could break your tests or have other stuff happening. Um, and then just one last thing is the, uh, for this, it's weird. If you Google like, how do I test your, or, or replace like something like this, right? Where you have your API, you have a library that's being loaded for your API. It's a JavaScript file that's kind of like here in your API folder, wherever it is. Uh, how do you replace that? And there's some there's some ways that are supposed to work, uh, where you can like in your tests like uh, you know say that hey I just want this like API thing not to work, and then like I think you do like a uh, mock thing up here and like say oh uh, replace update with this. It never worked properly, and I don't know why. Um, and uh, so from advice from a coworker was uh, basically creating this mocks folder, which is another way of doing it, but basically the only way I've gotten it to work. So in, if I'm in this API folder and I've got a JavaScript file that I want to override and never have run when uh, the test is running, or sorry, not never have run, but like be able to, to do this mock thing, you just have to create an underscore, underscore, mocks, underscore, underscore file. All it does is, uh, so you've got your, uh, if you remember, our thing had an update function. We want to not have the update function run, and we just need to uh, have it be, uh, mock update, and then we've got our mock implementation, which returns true, and you know, update should be this mock update and not the real update function, and then that way when you run this mock, update won't run. So just a gotcha where we spent a good chunk of time figuring out, okay, how do I overwrite this file? Just create a mock folder, the way it goes. So that was a lot.